That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Tintorera Tiger Shark, also known as Tintorera Killer Shark. Uh, it's a 1977, I guess you could say cult classic, uh, released by Kino Lorber and Scorpion Releasing January 5th, 2021 uh, on Blu-ray. Uh, <laughs> I decided to watch this because I love shark films. Sure. Um, so initially I thought it would be like kind of like a Jaws ripoff. It, it is very much uh, in that cycle of films after Jaws throughout the early 80s, including the Jaws sequels, which are very much Jaws ripoffs. But what sets this film apart is the sort of bulk of the, like the sort of central plot point of this film is a thruple. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the basic story is about a man named Steve, who's like a U.S. Mexican American person. It's kind of vague because he's played by an Italian actor. No, Hugo oh. Hugo Stiglitz, oh. who is a notable Mexican actor. He was in instructor. Oh, he is Mexican. He is Mexican. Oh wow! Uh, his name was what uh, Till Schweiger's uh, character in *Inglorious Bastards* is named after. This person. Anyway, this Stephen character, we find out that he's flying in from the U.S. to spend some time on his yacht in Mexico, like this coastal town. So he shows up, he meets a lovely British, well, lovely, she's beautiful, but she seems like trash. But anyway, this British woman named Patricia. Played by Fiona Lewis. Instantly falls in love with her. Yes. She's kind of like cool on that, so she... No, no, the problem is he tells her that after a night of lovemaking that he thinks he's in love with her and she gets huffy and says, well, let me know when you know. Oh, see, I took that as like she didn't like that. I, th I think she didn't like how he said it because it's like oh, that makes more sense yeah. that she felt like well You should know that you're in love yeah. with me. Okay, that makes sense. Anyway the next day She's back on the beach like mm -hmm. this very touristy beach and she is canoodling with a man named Miguel Played by Andres Garcia who's kind of a sex symbol from that period who's more handsome than Steven mm -hmm. So Steven sees this through his binoculars on his yacht and hops on his little boat and like the the little side boat, mm -hmm. like speeds over to the beach, confronts them, gets into a fight with Miguel. Mm -hmm. Patricia's pissed, so she's done with them. Mm -hmm. Then we move to Patricia and Miguel at his place with a night of lovemaking. After they're done, she gets up to hop into the ocean, I guess to rinse off fluids, and a tiger shark kills her. Yeah. Tintorera gets her. Tintorera gets her. And then that's the last that's we hear, hear about her <laughs> at all. So the next day, Stephen is out at like the town bar or whatever, and he <laughs> sees Miguel sees him and like approaches him, and now they're like buddies. Well, and they they're, they're, and they're there with two women. Mm -hmm. And they take these women back to the yacht and have sex with them and have a good old time. And now they're like really buddies. We mm -hmm. find out that Miguel is kind of a gigolo, which I'll get into later because he okay. makes comments that are weird. Uh -huh. But he's basically a gigolo. Mm -hmm. And Steven's rich. So they make a good couple, I guess, of friends because Steven just pays for everything. Mm -hmm. When one night they're at the restaurant and they meet a lady named Gabriella. Played by the... Uh star headliner susan george who doesn't show up till 40 minutes <laughs> and they instantly have a connection and she basically says like let's be like a threesome like a like a throuple but there are three rules mm -hmm. one no jealousy two no other ladies three no love mm -hmm. And then literally the next scene is her giving them rings and they get married. <laughs> yeah, but amongst themselves. Yeah. And, and then she sees that they, they also go kill sharks, uh, which she's very disturbed by, but doesn't... So the middle of the film is just them kind of like living their little thruple life and seeming to be happy when they go out one day to go shark hunting, the three of them, and Miguel jumps in the water and Tito Rera kills him. So, yeah. So now they're grieving, Stephen and uh, yeah, Gabriella. They, they have a morose moment on the boat where they seem depressed, and then and then the next thing you know, she's packing. And then Gabriella's packing, and Stephen's like, "Where are we going?" He's like, "Can't we go somewhere else?" And she's like, "Well, I'm going, but you're not going with me. Like, I'm done." So now it's just Stephen. Mm -hmm. So now he is sort of on a mission to find the shark, right? Vaguely, like we see him talking to. Like, like coastal authorities and they're like we're working with the fishermen to catch Tinto Rara and then he he reconnects with the two women 
that he, he and Miguel originally. And then he parties with them and then wants to take them back to his yacht and then he's making out with one of them in the water and she's basically ripped out of his hands by Teen Terrera. Uh, and then it finally ends with him, he goes back at night alone and with the help of his, uh, the man that, who takes care of his yacht, Colonado, uh, basically kills Teen Terrera and that, that's the end of the movie. And then we get a repeated montage of the thruple visiting these ruins and having a photo shoot. This is a very interesting film. Uh, okay, I'm gonna oh, go ahead. It was not what I was expect. I wasn't expecting to review this. It was sent with a pile of other Kino Lorber films, and I just, you know, it, it looked like a it looks like a trashy Jaws ripoff. And then halfway through, it's like, oh, this is a sex movie about throuples. <laughs> the so the opening of the film is this man named Colonado. I, I don't know if it's Colonado or Colorado. Well, but... IMDb credits him as Colonado. Okay, I Colorado. think the subtitles might have said both, but uh, played by Roberto Flacco Guzman. Let me tell you something. Roberto Flacco Guzman looks like a grizzled Adrian Brody. <laughs> I was getting a little John Turturro there as well, yeah. But, um... I, after, after, like, the first couple of scenes with him, I'm like, God, I hope we're not stuck with him. <laughs> Ugh. But anyway, so the fun thing about these types of Italian films is the dubbing, mm -hmm. right? The dubbing's always fun. But, and this film delivers on bad dubbing, but this dialogue oh, is yeah. atrocious. Oh, yes. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was directed by a cult film. He's known as a cult filmmaker, Rene Cardona Jr., uh, who we have seen one other film of his. We had put it on randomly one night, The Night of a Thousand Cats. Oh, that's him? That's him. I mean, he directed like damn near a hundred films in his, uh, so yeah uh, but but other than that I'm not really familiar with his work per se in addition to the dialogue of the music there's a lot of disco music and a lot of like oh. 70s type ballads so two things I invite everybody that watches this to uh, google the Chanter sisters okay and bask in the uh, photos that come up. Oh, from I don't even know about this. Okay. Uh, but the, the score of the film was actually quite good. It was the score by uh, Basil Puladoris, who uh, is a very notable uh, composer. He did the score for Robocop, for Hoven's film, uh, and many other notable films. But yeah, the disco songs are not good. Like. Uh, you have to watch the film with subtitles so that you can see the lyrics for the songs. Mm -hmm. There's one song that I wrote down because it's played twice, mm -hmm. where the lyrics are, I know I'll never find another you. <laughs> <laughs> Which reminded me of Norwood Young's book, uh, Back to My Me. Back to My Me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, a lot of interesting things. It, it, it felt very much like uh, uh, a sexual version of Jules and Jim or something. Oh. Patricia, that actor lady character, oh. she really thought she was something special. Well, because she kind of was. She is. She's beautiful. So She should have been the lead, not the one who looks like, what did you say, Emma Bunton mixed with Miley Cyrus? <laughs> or, and I was getting Petula Clark and Olivia Newton-John from Miss Susan George. She's not cute. Okay, let me let me talk about the two actresses first. Okay, go ahead. So yes, Fiona Lewis. It's watching it now. It's like, why wasn't she Gabriella? Uh, but Fiona Lewis, I have her memoirs, which I've yet to read, called "Mistakes Were Made." Some in French. I first came across her in. An, oh, you do have that book. Yeah, I first came across her in an Ozploitation film called. It's known as Dead Kids, but I think the original title is Strange Behavior. Louise Fletcher's in it. Check it out. Uh, and she's one of those women you watch on screen like, who is that? Um, so she was in this film. I get the sense very much that she's kind of like a Jacqueline Bissett ripoff who starred in The Deep, which is also Peter Benchley material that I think was released in 77 as well. But she, she has that vibe. She's this very beautiful British woman with very large breasts that you get to see. Um, but, but unfortunately just disappears. But Susan George, who as I said doesn't show up till 40 minutes in, Susan George is kind of on the cusp of being a big deal in the 70s. She's she was she has was involved in some of the most kind of horrific sex scenes like rape scenes of the period because she's the one who's she's Dustin Hoffman's wife in Straw Dogs um, she's in Mandingo uh, they are two very notorious scenes in both of those movies and she, and then in here the sexual uh, overtones she kind of reminds me of that period of Heather Graham's filmography in the late '90s early 2000s where every single performance was like that of a nymphette or a prostitute or some other sex worker. Uh, but yeah, she definitely has a different vibe compared to Fiona Lewis. Um, speaking of the actor's appearances, I thought 
Miguel was attractive. He, if you look up information about him, uh, Andres Garcia, who I believe is still alive. He is still alive, and he actually, I, I understand he's like a very big deal in Mexico. Yes, uh, and in the 70s he was known for actually being the only person to physically ride several different kinds of sharks. Uh, oh. But he was a, a notable sex symbol uh, then, and he survived an assassination attempt in Venezuela, uh, and also prostate cancer. Good for him. So the, he is a very interesting filmography. Uh, Stiglitz is also kind of... I was going to say I thought Miguel looks like Mark Norman mixed with Paul Rudd. I have Paul Rudd written down yeah. as well, yeah. Uh, much more appealing than Stiglitz who maybe wasn't getting sleep or getting too many coke things. I think he spent too much time in the sun. Yeah. He was very tan. There's so many closes on him where you're like, oh, pull back. Lots of nudity, which is nice. Um, yeah. Okay, so Miguel's occupation. So he... Steven, when they're first starting to get along, like and they're spending time on the yacht, Steven's like, so don't tell me like you take money from women. And Miguel's like, hell yeah, but sometimes I pay them. And I thought was very confused by But that. didn't he say I try to avoid that? I try to avoid it. So I was very confused like what he does. But then he says I go to Acapulco and PV mm -hmm. and you know, that's where all the rich people are. And so clearly he's like an opportunist, but mm -hmm. I thought that was funny that he said, it might've been lost in translation. Maybe he meant I pay like, I pay in other ways. Yeah. But the literal translation made it seem like he's like, like I hope you're not breaking even with this bullshit. But there were other, I think, things lost in translation, including with Colonado, who at one point Steve asked him if he's ever been to Mexico or something. And right, it's like, aren't we in Mexico? <laughs> wait, wait, where are we again? I don't know. Um, oh, like so, trigger alert, because uh, that was alarming to me. We do see sharks being killed, like more than a few times mm -hmm. yeah. which was you know nowadays that would never happen so it is a little alarming to see these animals being, like dying on screen like just dying on screen mm -hmm. I'm, I'm assuming for no good reason other than this film yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um it was uh, apparently based on a novel although i tried to look up if uh, maybe it must be out of print uh by ramon bravo who also served as one of the directors of photography he did all the underwater sequences, I understand. Uh, hmm. He also is uncredited uh, on another Jaws ripoff called The Last Shark oh. from 1981. I will say the underwater scenes and um, are well done. It looks good in this, uh, the, uh, the score. Well, actually, there's more like under, like than Jaws. Mm -hmm. Like there's more real live shark action than in Jaws. I mean, it's clearly not as good of a movie, but yeah, I think some, a lot of care was put into that component of it. Yeah, it, it comes across as a lot different than the packaging would suggest. Yeah. Uh, I would recommend it like with friends, like maybe with several uh, beverages, oh, alcoholic and, beverages. And Priscilla Barnes is one of the girls on the beach at the end. You see her in a couple scenes oh. before the final massacre on the beach. Um, you know, she's from, I, thought she, I think she's the replacement from Three's Company. Oh, she replaces Chrissy Snow. Yeah, and because we oh. just saw her play, uh, she shows her breasts in the Kevin Smith movie Mallrats, which we just rewatched recently as well. What would you give this film? Uh, I would give this two out of five. It is very entertaining, but you know, it's not a good film. I would give it two out of five as well. All right, bye. Bye.